Hey everyone, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh and we are here with your favorite apostates. Is that what you guys calling yourself now still? Yes. Yeah, because you're apostates. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you don't know what apostate is, it's a Mormon who is basically on the outs. It's you're you're basically screwed, right? We do videos together a lot and these guys have their own channel which is very thriving. They're doing a lot of great things as uh, for ex-Mormon culture. They're they're the voice for a lot of people in this Small, it's, it's a pretty small community, but a growing community of ex-Mormons who are coming, who are waking up to the uh, to the bullshit, basically, right? Essentially. So those who haven't known you, and a lot of people love you guys here. I mean, everybody loves you guys. They love you more than they love me, and I'm a little jelly. I'm not going to lie, but I'm glad. <laughs> But for those who don't know you, give us a little synopsis of what you guys are doing, um, what's going on, and how you got here. Do you want to take the reins on this one? Sure. Jordan's good at describing. <laughs> um, we left the church in March or April of last year. April. Yep. April of last year. Um, we didn't have community. We didn't really know anybody. So we got on TikTok and started sharing our story and then it kind of blew up mm -hmm. <laughs> overnight, um, which is where we connected with Josh and then the things kind of rolled from there. And so we're just dealing with the continued fallout of leaving Mormonism. <laughs> I would like to, 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 to parry that with the continued freedom that you're experiencing from Mormonism. It's true. Right, it's I mean, it's the best. It's just half. I'm I'm generally not a glass half full type of guy. But in this case, I think you guys, and I think a lot of people who exit this church, um, in this religion and this this prison for a lot of people, they the freedom is just palpable for some of them. Right, you can probably have you guys ever met someone who left and were just like, you could literally see complete difference in a in a, in a transformation who they are. We see that a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because when you're a believing Mormon. The, you see a change too, but you think it's a bad change. Yeah. But now we see the change and it's overall. The positive, light is gone so. from our eyes. So. I love it. And yeah. we're going to do, and we, we do videos all the time. We've got lots of topics we've got in a little thing that I want to continue to do. But, you know, we're busy and I want you guys to focus on your channel. But I love it when you guys come over here. I really do appreciate that. And you guys are, you know, I love it. I love you guys. Just, I want to hug you. you. Yeah. When COVID's over, I'm coming <laughs> down to Utah. We're hugging and we're going to go wear our outfit. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go wear the outfit somewhere at the mall or some shit. It is happening. Yeah, we're going to want to. I'm excited <laughs> for this. Police estimate or something. <laughs> Are you allowed to be armed in Utah? Yes. Uh, yeah. You, you I don't mean, even need you, to have a permit. You, if you have a registered firearm, okay. you can carry it. Can so pro it. and con, meaning other people will be armed. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. So yeah, yeah. warning heated. Okay. So today we're talking about eight <laughs> passengers because what I, I love what Jordan McHugh do. Not only do they cover um, Mormon culture, ex-culture, and they know their theology, which makes them a pretty big voice in this because uh, they they just know their shit, which is good because they're educated in this. They both went to BYU, right? Or Yeah. I McKay went to BYU, did. Idaho. Yeah. And Jordan. But I, I also served a mission. I so went I, to yeah. the rival school. But you went, still to the, here in Utah. went to the rival school and they both grew up Mormon in their entire life. So they know, they know their onions and we say that. And one of the funniest things McKay and I were just saying this is that when they do chats, some people will come at them and say, you don't know anything when they know more than you. And the thing is, I think once you start realizing and knowing more about Mormon culture, that's when people start waking up. They part, start saying, ah. Oh, that's a bit weird. I think maybe we should just reassess this. I think those who immerse themselves fully in these things, I think that they they wake up to it. That's what I'm, that's my conjecture anyway. And so in today's video, um, again, I was saying that I love the direction you guys are going. Not only are you covering ex-Mormon stuff, but you're covering Mormon families who are vloggers, which is a huge, huge population of the vloggers that I cover. There are so many Mormon vloggers. I think we came to the conclusion that there are so many because Mormons ingest Mormon uh, content, right? And so they have this yeah, massive group of families, millions and millions and millions of Mormons who they can give content to and they can pull from. And so that's why a lot of these families have tons of followers because they're not talented. They're zero talented. That's none, zero. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> and so one of those family vloggers we both cover is Eight Passengers and Ruby Frank, um, Frankie Frankie. And uh, the video I just did of her recently was her taking Christmas away from two of her kids. And I think one of those kids is in the video we're talking about today, a 10 and an eight year old missed Christmas because they were a-holes. They were just being regular kids. And she did not release a Christmas video. 
So we, so she likely did go through there because Ruby is not someone who's going to buckle to pressure online. She's going to say, don't tell me how to parent, you know, I'll do what I got to do. And I think that she's been not only that ostracized from her entire family, like we know, we don't have solid yeah, people proof. People have been asking us yeah. about that. It's going around. I'm like, ah. They're leaving bad reviews on connections and all this kind of stuff. And uh, they weren't like asking. They should. Yep. And uh, not only that, they also aren't in any videos. Nobody's talking about them. Something's going on. I think they just went a little too far, Mormon. You know, because if you look at the other families, they're not so crazy at it, right? There's not, they're not nuts about it. These people are just, because he works at BYU. So he's got to be drinking yeah. the Kool-Aid, right? He's right down to the Kool-Aid. So all that For to be sure. said, today sure. we're covering the baptism. And I think it's interesting. It's not really a snark video, but we're going to let Jordan McKay talk to us about this process. We did do a little bit of this. We did dive into this for marriage, specifically in the ceremonies, but this is an interesting topic and we've got them walking through. So the rules of the game, you guys tell me when to pause and I'll pause. And if I okay. pause, I'll pause. Okay. So just, okie dokie. And yeah. so, and I'll, I'll pause a lot more than you guys likely will, but what we'll walk through this video. It's eight minutes and 46 seconds long. To, and then if you find something interesting or I have a question about baptism, we'll do it. Is that cool? Cool. Yep. You guys are amazing. All right, let's do it. What is today? My baptism. You can tell from the white jumper. Okay. Ugh. Can you? <laughs> Quick question. <laughs> when do you get baptized as a, as a Mormon? Eight years old. Eight years old. That is considered the age of accountability. Which is, yep. have you ever met an eight-year-old? <laughs> yeah, seriously. There's, okay. It's kind of a little quirky thing. Um, eight years old is when you would usually get baptized if you were like born in the church or your family joined the church okay. when you were younger. Um, but for whatever reason, if the parents are inactive, this happened a bunch when I was on my mission where we would try to baptize children whose parents were inactive mm -hmm. or whatever. Oh, usually they would make you wait until they were nine. I don't know why it doesn't make any sense. Again, it's one of those stupid. rules. It's one of those things that they just, you could tell it's made up. It's like, it sounds it's made like up because it is. Yeah. yeah. It just doesn't, they're like, ah, let's pull a number to have because when Joseph Smith started this church was 18... When was it? 1830. And an eight year old in 1830 was basically an adult, right? Those people are working the coal mines. Those they're making shoes. You know, they're done. They graduated. Right. So it's a little bit different when Joseph because an eight year old's days basically an adult. I get that, but now eight year olds are like have never not seen a touch screen and they still eat their boogers. So it's just different. I get it. But okay, interesting. So okay, sorry. We'll keep going. I am so proud of you. There's a song. That's nice. Is this a standard Mormon church here? Yes. Uh, yeah, this is yeah. an older one. Um, yeah. They're kind of more standardized nowadays, uh, kind of across the board, but uh, they live in Mormon lands, so there's a lot of older chapels. Also, um, something I grew up with all my childhood you were not supposed to film or take pictures in the chapel. Oh. It was just like a. You're still not allowed it, to do that. Is it in the handbook? I don't know if it's in the handbook, but uh, something even tells me like, something tells me they rented the space. Hold on, let me let the uh, stupid dog go. Give no, me a second. It's, they it's own the their chapel. buildings, don't they? Uh, what? Because they charge for their who? They charge tithing for building stuff. Yeah. Um. But yeah, they. He's barking. So, so no, you can't rent. You can't rent the chapel. No, um, you you just have to schedule it through the bishop. Yeah. And so, how did they get this with and be able to film? Baptisms are okay. Um, they're not supposed to film. But they're not but. supposed to film. Okay. So yeah. would they have gotten in trouble by their bishop for doing this? They could have. They could have, but uh, I'm sure they're granted a bit of leniency because it's a good missionary opportunity. Ah, yeah. Okay. 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 So. We're making this decision to get baptized. You know that what you're doing is very, it's like the most... Oh my gosh, it's so culty. And I'm realizing it's bringing me back to when I was baptized and I, bapt I was baptized when I was 17. It was a choice I made. And I honestly believe, still do, that it should be a choice that you get to make when you're ready to make that choice. You should be cognitively aware of what you're doing. Children should not be baptized. And I know Catholics 100%. are going to come stab me in the eye. Baptism does nothing for your salvation, by the way. I don't know about the Mormon church. Hey, here's a question. Hey, does baptism part of your salvation? If you're not baptized, can you get into the planets? You can't get into the celestial kingdom at all. Um, that's kind of like the big difference. People are like, oh, you don't get saved if you're... Because everybody's technically saved mm. in Mormonism. You get but resurrected. You but get you more saved when you do the cool shit. You get more you shit. Get, okay. You get the VIP roped off. Heaven. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's silly. Baptism. So in my culture, in uh, Baptist, in you know, fundamental Baptist and that type of you know non-denominational churches, um, baptism is just basically a. So you do it out of. I guess the I guess Jesus says to do it, but if you don't do it, it doesn't necessarily hinge on your salvation at all. It just means that you did something in, it's your outward expression of your faith. Just saying, I'm doing this because I believe that Jesus is who he said he is, and this is my way of telling the public. It's just, it's basically just a, that's it. That's it. It doesn't really do anything. Catholics are different. Catholics, you're baptized as an infant, and that's like, that's, you're sealed. Yeah. Yeah. Which The difference, um, I think they do infant bat I, i'm not really sure on the catholics so okay but i, I will i'm gonna be of... doing a deep dive in catholics okay. i will be doing it maybe we should do it together and then we'll learn together there you go <laughs> i know the a lot of like other denominations they do it as a child because if you aren't baptized and you die before you're baptized then you're damned to hell but at least the the mormons give the eight year leniency like oh if you're a child and you die you don't have any sins you're all good Okay, I'll give so, that's a that's I, a good that's a dope, positive right there. That's a good positive. Yeah, okay, we don't, we don't only talk shit. We, we'll <laughs> say facts too. So the from the baptism tanks I've seen before and the one we're looking at right now, that I've seen some glamorous ones with like bulls and shit. What? Why are they at this YMCA only doing the it? temple? Oh, I see. So and do most people get baptized dead. in temple? Oh, it's only for the dead. Dang, why do the yeah. dead get the good shit? Okay, they're already dead, yeah. man. All right. <laughs> it may have been different years prior where you could get baptized in the temple, but not at, anymore. anybody who's alive right now that I know, that it wouldn't do that. You can get baptized anywhere that's okay. there's water. But oh, every church building a toilet? has one of could these. Could you do a toilet? It. If you can be fully submerged <laughs> in that toilet, <laughs> yes, then yes. Uh, we we had should make who would do it in the ocean and. Uh, <laughs> like rivers and stuff when I was on my mission. It's like a, I have an like idea. Jesus this, bin. this will get me in trouble, but for ex Mormons who'd like to be baptized out of the Mormon church, we should get a massive toilet and unbaptize them into the secular <laughs> <we> world. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Holy shit. I, we would be murdered. We would definitely be murdered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Maybe possibly I loathe this logo with all of my heart. It's the it's worst. Terrible. They are millionaires, and this is their logo. It looks like it was created in paint. Yes. No, it was created in paint. It was by it was like It's like the uh, they were like, yeah, you know the Ron John Surf Shop logo? Yeah, <laughs> take that, but make it shitty, and then we'll pay you $8 yeah. for Take that it. and baptize it in a toilet, and this is what you get. <laughs> now, the issue is that they've, you know, you can rebrand there are things people have done it all the time and they have refused to. And this is what this is what gives me pause to say that Ruby refuses to ever be told what to do. Because that's this 100% logo, what it is. Yeah, this logo is She proof. knows people shit on it, so she's yeah. not going to change it. She could be brilliant. She could be. But the evilly brilliant. You know what I mean? Like I was she's gonna the say, evil villain. Manipulative at yeah. best. Yeah. All right. Good come on. morning, Pass. Whoa. She's been through some what ha- Okay. <laughs> Looks a little disheveled. How are you guys today? Today's vlog is a big one. We are doing Eve's baptism today. Also today is Chad's homecoming. All right, McKay, explain homecoming. Homecoming is uh, when your missionary comes home. And it's kind of like the uh, the little fanfare parade them around. Look at this missionary, how faithful they were to finish their mission with honors. And let's hear them speak because they're so filled with the spirit of the Lord. So they get to so speak in church in front of everyone. Chad was, church. he was on a mission for what, a year? Two years. What, Two he, years? He the whole time? I don't know. He, he's, if he's having a homecoming, having a I homecoming, imagine he did. Yeah, he probably would have uh, been. So does like that mean, so he's, he's, he's elevated in the, in the post-Mormon world, but now they're very proud of him, even though they sent him off to like all these Anastasi and made him sleep on a beanbag. I got to say this yeah. for Chad, man. This guy has gone through the shit and he is stuck through Mormon culture. I don't know how they pulled that off, dude. I don't know how they did it. I, yeah, especially because most of his two years on his mission was probably like chatting on Facebook and doing yeah, TikToks. Yeah, that's true, right? Reason. Oh, because they're not yeah. going door to door as much anymore. There's, I run, no. okay, funny story. I run a, a, a Facebook marketplace page in my old town up in Ottawa. And I still have it because, you know, eventually we'll be back in Ottawa. And oh, no, a, a, like couple, going. a couple of Mormon dudes 
take pictures of themselves and they go into these group pages and he's like, look, we are willing to come help you around your house, put up shelves. You need some yeah. help with electronics. We are there. And the hundreds of comments of these ladies are like, we thank you so much. And I'd get in there. I'm like, and, but some people would say, are you going to come in and talk to us about Jesus? Person. Yeah. Are you going to come talk about Jesus? And they wouldn't answer those people. I deleted and blocked mm -hmm. them. But, um, I just, at the same time, I feel like that's, Think about that. That's good marketing, dude. You're gonna go help some old ladies put some shelves now. up. Oh, yeah. brilliant. We've also we've been we've in encountered a lot of those. All the the increased online um, presence. There's been like a bunch of pages that are popping up that are for the missionaries and the mission where they're at. Mm -hmm. But there's like zero explicit presence of like the Book of Mormon or like Mormonism. It's just all Jesus based. Yeah. And so they're, you really got to So they're dig going, they're going see. really hard. That, and that's my, again, my impression of Mormons were that, even though I, I knew, because I knew. But that's, then you're going even harder into that, trying to show that it's not about Joseph Smith, it's about Jesus. So when does the transition happen? Do they go to these things and all of a sudden, that's, but here's, that's false advertisement, because as soon as these people go take next steps, they're going to be like, what the hell? This is exactly. nothing like I think it's going to be. Yeah. Okay. And that's what they're trying to do because they're losing people. And well, so they got to do something somehow. And so I guess they gotta conceal the it must be working then. Intent. Well, um, it's probably not working. Hopefully, hopefully it's not. All right. <laughs> hopefully not. Sherry came home and surprised Eve. I also wanted to just. Sherry came home from down the street. Is that what she said? Hold on. Sorry. She came home. Hold on. Isn't she going to BYU? I also wanted Hold to on. stay. Also today is Chad's homecoming. <laughs> Sherry came home and surprised Eve. Oh, Sherry came home from school. She's at BYU. Okay, so yeah, she's yeah. literally like, like down the street. Oh, <laughs> from where they live. Sherry came home <laughs> twenty minutes for the after lunch. <laughs> yeah. for, for lunch. <laughs> uh. You're doing great, sweetie. They're not doing great. <laughs> These people got ratioed to harder than ever before even over the chad thing even over the not feeding your five-year-old really? everything this christmas thing hit them really hard like it and i can't i can't believe that this freaking what what is jody what is she, she's a licensed professional counselor i can't believe she put that on her page she really <laughs> heard the words coming out of those lips <laughs> And was like, yes, this is a great thing. <laughs> Which she this should know makes better. Sense. Yeah, yeah. She should know better. She already got her license on probation once, so that we're gonna keep covering that. But also, <laughs> didn't Sherry also tell everybody that anxiety is a choice? <laughs> yes, yes, she My did. My mom is a healthcare well, professional, and she says that anxiety is a choice. Here's here. <laughs> there's a guy who did a TikTok who was watching that, and he gets up. He's like. Yeah, thank God. For someone who has generalized anxiety <laughs> disorder, uh, Frankie, Frankie, you can go F yourself because it is not a choice, you dumbass. Seriously. Sorry. I had to yes. say it. That's yeah. silly. And 100%. that's fundamental Christianity in a nutshell right there. They're like, well, we're praying Basically. away from you. If you guys haven't exactly. seen Dope Sick, go watch Dope Sick, okay? Because there's a moment in that where they bring in like this church praying over these people who are addicts and they think that that's going to do it. And it's... You know, maybe it does in some cases has happened one in a million, but uh, yeah, it doesn't work. And it really no. made me, it triggered me actually. It was really crazy. Here when school starts, I have been cutting back on how many vlogs we do per week. I've been because we got ratioed. She got majorly ratioed. Also, her kids aren't there to be in the content and nobody wants to hear her talk oh. with her weird face. So and her also her looking hair. Well, her the thing that's happening here, yeah. There's chill on the whatever. There's a lot happening. Product. Here. Um, again, I think what's happening is they're being ostracized by their family. Is really weird because it feels like why? Because if those uh, unless those other family members are saying we don't want anything to do with the Mormon Church anymore, and they're kicking them out because it doesn't look like they're leaving. Yeah. No. Seems they're, like they're pretty. It uh, seems like they're pretty. Well, and invested. his job hinges on it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That makes sense started we were doing six days a week and then we cut back to five days a week and then four and then three and okay we can count lady <laughs> for about the last six months we've been doing three week and i am cutting back even more good good do it do it cut, cut back, back to more. zero <laughs> cut back to negative <laughs> delete your shit and i am doing some really fun and exciting things in the mental health field uh-uh 
Okay, no. Okay, we're gonna, we're going to talk about this for a moment. We're just going to yes, pause please. here to talk about this. Jordan is I, in this world. I am in school to be a social worker, okay? So I'm in my master's program. So I, even as a student, have to be held to a certain standard of what I say, mm-hmm, okay? Mm-hmm. But when you're, you know, she's doing work under a licensed professional counselor, which is just bizarre but you can't call yourself a mental health professional when you're traumatizing your kids like i'm sorry or you're not a mental health professional you're not because you don't have proper education or credentials to be to be that person absolutely not she i think she calls herself like an educator in her bio or whatever i'm like don't listen to anything this woman says just no no qualifications she's an educator like i'm thin okay that's (laughs) just not and i have hair (laughs) she's as much educated as i have hair mckay I stan your hair. I could donate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, give me some of that shit. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm really passionate about, and it's a place where I want to put my time. Please don't. And so it's less time vlogging at home, which actually works out great because my kids hate are you. Less on my phone. Oh. They're working, they're moving out, they've got their own things going on. My kids are growing up. Remember the, I don't know if you guys know this about her, but she said in an earlier vlog and she said it multiple times when her kids turn 18, you're on your own. You, I feel you like I like, have heard that. And she has said it multiple times. She don't, I don't know if she pays her kids. I know she gave them an allowance. I don't think she gave them the nest egg when they turn 18. I don't think that happened. I would love to know because that's child labor laws times a million. Everything intensifies like you took everything from your children and then kicked them out when they're 18 likely they give them a little bit obviously they probably help i'm not saying they go live in a cardboard box down by the river maybe they buy them a car or whatever but i think at the same time all of their wealth that they built from this channel came from their kids chad and what's the oldest girl's name uh i forget uh, her name already Shit, i thought it was matter. sherry is it sherry Sherry, the, those are the two main, if you look at their analytics, Chad's videos were the ones that got them the most hits and she knew it and she would use him. And that's creepy because she knows who's watching and that's gross. Yeah. But um, what's what's happening here is she is, those kids have said, okay, well, they've come to terms with that and they're on their way out. And even Sherry did a video saying, I don't want to do this anymore. They don't, it's easy money it is for them because they can they can use that leverage to build platforms, but they hate being bullied online. And who, who set them up to be that way? This yeah. one right here. Yeah. <laughs> This angle, this the weird angle. The call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> exactly. And I feel like I'm growing up alongside with them. And so it's really... Maybe you should have grew up before they grew <laughs> up so say, that you could have been a mom. I don't mom. think you've grown up enough. <laughs> I think yeah. uh, that's backwards, actually, lady. She's like, oh, I grew up with them. Well, no, that's that was not probably really. not no. smart. Thanks for... Now you're a mental health professional, so that's good. But again, I think what happens is in this world, Mormons need to only go to Mormons for their mental health, which then perpetuates Mormon behavior and patriarchy and the fact that if she's honestly telling these people coming for help that anxiety is a choice, she could get people killed. Seriously. Well, that is dangerous. There was something on that page about suicide, too. And I was like, please, God, do not listen to this woman. This lady she could, is taking away Christmas from her children for her, their behaviors, and mm-hmm. she's going to really talk about suicide prevention and shit Just like stop. that. Yeah. Uh, again, it's a, she's going to get sued is what's going to happen. That's and I'm, I'll cover it on this channel here, and so you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Exciting, and I will continue to share my life with you. So Great. For those of Lucky you us. Who are asking, hey, where are all the vlogs? Why is it um, you're not on here as much as I would like? And that's why. So thank you to all those who are asking, and I hope you enjoy this very special vlog. We won't. This is your special day today, isn't it? Yes. Wow, they they brought her in the jumpsuit? That's kind of odd. So is it actually called a jumpsuit? It yeah, is. A baptismal clothing we call jumpsuit. It, why didn't they call it a dunk suit? I feel like they missed an opportunity here. Oh my god. That's I hilarious. I never considered that. Dunk but suit. But it's the worst. Dunk suit. TM, I, I own it. Now I'm I'm not selling I'm not gonna, Industries. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, sell it to the Mormon church. We have an idea for you. You wanna get some more <laughs> baptismal font clothing sales? The TK up. smoothie dunk suit. Boom. Yes. Nice. I love it's it. It's the anti TK smoothie <laughs> dunks. That's right. Oh yeah, this one keeps you with you get your taint back when you get uh <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I love that this thing, that the, the taint thing exists. I love it. The TK smoothie. Oh I love God. that. That that's a thing. I can't believe oh that God. that's a thing. It's horrifying. Incredible. You can tell. 
off on the white jumper. Mm -hmm. Yes, so Eve's put on her white jumper so that when she... How much does that thing cost? Uh, probably like 20 bucks. I was going to oh. say. Yeah. Does she no, get to it, keep it? Do you get to keep that? feel the material. Like, the, the shit that we gave you is nothing compared to this. Oh, it's okay. like a pair of... Um, like a pair of Dickies pants. Yeah, it's like <laughs> thick as you hell. Drowned yeah. if you get drowned. Yeah. It <laughs> weighs like yeah. 50 pounds when it's wet. <laughs> yep, 100%. Yeah, geez. Oh, silly Mormons. Thank you. Thanks. And you're all dressed in... You look like wrapping paper Lula from the Ro. 80s. Yeah. Is that what that is? Lula? Okay. Probably. Or is that her own brand? Know. It's her own brand. Oh, there you go. Lula Ho. She's got her... She's got her... <laughs> she's got her uh, brand of... Uh, Frocks, like, uh, uh, what do you call that? Like, um, Modest Frock Co. Hey, another company, let's do it. <laughs> but we'll put like secret designs in there of like naked people. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Pause real quick. I got to plug this camera yep. in. I have to take out my earrings. No. Or, yes. Or my jewelry like you, this. You'll need to take your necklace off for sure. I find this so weird. People don't actually realize. Oh, what? What? She's probably saying you need to take the necklace okay. off because it'll float up, but the uh, yeah. metal doesn't float. So, Silly. <laughs> quick quick question here. Not question. An observation. I find it odd that nobody really realizes this, but in order for her to film this, she had to set up a camera first, press record, then have this conversation with her daughter. If nobody, I guess a lot of people don't realize that the if the absurdity of this, to, if you actually, actually saw how this was done, you'd be like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. She's having a heart to heart yeah. with her daughter for this major event in their in their faith and she sets a camera yeah. just don't it, miss that it's not genuine that's for sure it's not no Can't way because we know that she's a tyrant hold on to it for you thank you, you. Know, put it on when you get out this little girl's sweet by the way i think she's, she's so cute and i think that's in spite of her parents <laughs> not because of them probably because of her sisters who raised her <laughs> i like that i'm gonna put your hair in a french braid so then when you get out of the water and your hair is dripping wet It'll just, I'll just kind of towel dry your hair and it'll stay in the braid and it'll stay nice because we won't have time to fix your hair between. Again, look at her. When she's talking to her daughter, she looks at the she's camera. She's talking to the camera. It's yeah. weird. It's weird. It's weird. And this, like if that. this is, if this is supposed to be something super special and I get they're filming it because, you know, they want to show this, this, you know, without throwing shade, this is a special moment in their faith. So I don't want to I get it. Right. Again, I don't think it really hinges on anything. It doesn't hurt anybody. Not really. Um, it just kind of deepens their resolve into the faith. But at the same time, this is supposed to be a special moment. Maybe you shouldn't have filmed it. Yeah, other than making you sign a contract that you will have to take great steps to get out of if you choose to go back. Forgot home. about that. Forgot about it. Make an yeah, eight-year-old sign contract. Other That's than that. <laughs> I mean, eight-year-olds who literally can't wipe their own ass generally can sign a contract for their for their you know eternity. Sounds good though. Yep. They I mean, make that covenants. makes sense That's for fine. Mormon vloggers who don't understand informed consent, though. That does make yep. more sense. Right? Absolutely. It tracks. Yep, it tracks. Your baptism and your confirmation. For those of you who are not familiar with what baptism is in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and what confirmation is, a baptism is when they are baptized. <laughs> Take some notes first. <laughs> Everybody, get your get your papers. Get Are your you little booklet out. You, we're going to take notes. We're doing a quiz at the end. Um, okay. A bat here. Let me just. I'll tell you what she just said. Recap that just in case you missed it. Now, for those of you who are unaware what a baptism is, it's when you are baptismed. <laughs> People are like, what? I hope she clarifies. By a member who has priesthood authority. Why didn't she just say you were dunked underwater? Instead of saying the term again, but a priest in authority, okay. And Eve's father, Kevin, has priesthood authority, so he's going to be... I would hope so. Are all BYU professors priesthood authorities? Um, all male... Of course. Caveat. BYU, yeah, as long as you're uh, an adult male, that would be you. Yeah. Oh, you can be a priesthood authority as an adult male. So would Chad, yeah. after he's finished his thing, is he now a priesthood authority? Oh, he's already. He got, before his mission, he got the priesthood uh -huh. power. Yeah. And women He's can a, never get priesthood power. Priesthood. Nope. Nope. I feel like you send these, they're doing it backwards as far as marking perspective because Mormon women are gorgeous. Why don't you send them out to fix people's houses and paint and shit? I would, yeah, come on over. Oh, they do too. <laughs> they're, they're the ones oh, they who do that? get okay. sent to Temple Square. The prettiest ones get sent to Temple Square because that's where people come to learn about Mormon. Oh, and they're like so. kind of like, uh, Temple Square is when they come, people are in tourists, they're like tourists 
Like they're basically yeah, yeah. taking you on a tour. Yep. Around the temple and the I saw a bunch of Mormons. Like I saw a bunch of Mormons at the airport, a bunch of women and men. I think they're all on their way to do something and they were talking to everybody. They're so social. And the women were look like supermodels. Yep. To be baptizing her. In the Church of Jesus Christ, we do it by immersion, which means complete, which means completely covered. And so they go all the way under the water representing death, actually. To, the whole body goes under and then the whole body comes up out of the water and that represents a rebirth and which is standard for for i think christian baptism as well not catholic catholics are just sprayed with holy water yeah I'm like there's sprinkle 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 catholics i don't do catholics i don't even think do full immersion baptism in any at any capacity that's what i thought and so that is what she's saying there is the actual Christian definition of a baptism as well. So that's, I think Joseph Smith took that from the evangelical side of Christianity and said, we like that. The immersion of shows that you were dead to the old world and that you were born new into the, it's yeah. like the celestial plane. You gotta whatever. be like Jesus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are the kind of denominations that he had like all around him at the time. Yeah. So it's like, makes nothing. sense because that was, I did, when I did my first video about him, that was a huge um, evangelical awakening across America that was going on at the moment he started that. So he just, yeah, that's he had <laughs> opportunities and he capitalized. He really did. He did exactly. He's a capitalist. A new birth in Christ. After the baptism, there is a confirmation, and that is where Kevin will confirm the gift of the Holy Ghost to Eve. Explain. Confer is the word. Not confirm. no. Now, what does this mean? Conferring the gift of the Holy Ghost, so he um, essentially, like, one of the gifts of the Spirit, right, is to have the companionship of the Holy Ghost at all times. And before you are a member and you receive that gift, you don't have the constant companionship of the oh. Holy Ghost with you. So, so it has you, to be given to you. If yeah. you die before you're eight years old, do you not have the Holy Spirit? No, not with you at all times. They're like, oh, yeah, you can, like, feel the spirit. And I'm like, so what the hell's the difference? <laughs> They're and just making be, shit of that, that simple question. That one question that I had right there, that one simple question I had right there, again, they can't answer simple things because they no. just make this shit up after the problem exists. Okay, well, let's wait for the problem to exist, and then we'll make up something. To use it. Because if a child is held accountable at eight years old, then the, the, the spirit, maybe they should say the spirit is with the child until eight, till they make this choice. The spirit says, peace out. I'll see you after you're baptized. Yeah. Even, I know that's yeah. stupid, but it makes more sense. It makes a little more sense. Yeah. yeah. Which is, they don't want that because why would but the spirit leave? But then they leave? can't hey, indoctrinate I mean. the, oh, the good feelings that you have when you're in church, yeah, that's feeling the spirit. And then that's uh, a Mormon okay. thing. And rather than just like an emotional reaction to. Okay. Makes sense. This stress so is ugly. Okay. We believe in the Godhead, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And each of them... Not always. That's the Trinity. It's not the Godhead. The Godhead would be God. Yeah. They, right? Uh, Mormons refuse to call it the Trinity. Yeah. They, Why? And it's funny because the first edition of the Book of Mormon had a Trinitarian view of God. And then the next revision, suddenly it was a little different. Huh. So they so what? wanted distinguish that they're three separate personages they're three separate they're beings one in in purpose. well that's what the trinity is as well i know it's like they they won't use that term but they they like try to distance themselves because they don't want to be like the catholics or well, the terms are not mutually exclusive because the term i think in the bible says godhead three in one trinity that's what they say they know okay, nothing whatever I silly Seriously. those who don't understand what we're talking about we're nerding out right now a little bit but that's basically it's just semantics language it's all 100%. A different role to play, and the Holy Ghost will be a comforter, mm -hmm. a um, protector, and a witness of truth in Eve's life. AKA, sees all the sin, right? Basically. Yeah. Makes you feel so, bad about it. Like Santa Claus is watching yeah. if you're bad or good. Okay. All right. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Because I was, we're not told that when we're baptized, um, again, in Christianity, uh, you're not really baptized as a child. You are, but you have to understand it. So you have to be told, like I've done a bunch of baptism videos for my churches. It's one of the big things we did. It was a very powerful moment in a lot of people's faith. Okay. But you get kids in there and you're like, this kid shouldn't be baptized. <laughs> so their parents definitely put this on them, but they're not told any of this stuff. It's just basically, it's a, you're just you're submitting basically you're just saying i'm doing this and that's there's never told that you're doing you're just saying um what's the word i'm looking for not submission but basically you're just doing it because you uh you're telling the world so they don't tell any of this stuff to us this doesn't happen in christian world mm. interesting as long as she lives by the commandments as long as she lives 
her life pure and clean and close to God and chooses to live Caveat. a life inside Christ, she'll always have that companionship. So it's definitely tons of strings attached to this baptism. Huge caveat. Yeah. She'll have all those things if. If, 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 if. It's all based on if. Um, if and then, yeah. but you can stray and come back. And the, the one thing that still you still have is that you did get baptized. So it's still an anchor point in your yeah. faith. So, yeah. I mean, nobody can be perfect ever. And Mormons specifically obviously can't be perfect. And so she wants to, and the, the pure thing she's saying there is sexual purity, I think. For sure. Correct? For sure. Yeah. Pure, clean. Yep. What are you looking forward to? It'll be super fun. Russell said that it's so fun that he wanted to do it again, but... Their other kid's name you is Russell. Fun. The pool. You just get dunked. Okay. It's not really fun. It's... Yeah. Okay. I do know that I don't want to just have a baptism for just fun. Oh. Coach alert. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to Seriously. say thing I said. <laughs> yep. Don't Basically. forget to say this. This is a thing that an adult would say. Don't forget to say yep. that thing I coached you on. Don't worry. When you turn 11 <laughs> and you do it in the temple, it'll lose all fun because then it feels like you're getting waterboarded. So. Basically. <laughs> With these dickies on. Imagine you had to wear the <laughs> same size your whole life. <laughs> like, and you gain a little weight. You're like, I can't. I, it only fits my leg. All right. <laughs> to go to the temple. Mmm, you want to go to the temple. Yes, that's a very special and sacred place. Oh, that stuff creeps me out. I, I just... I roll. The temple is a reward, is a place, a secret club that you get into by doing all these things. Just by saying the word temple in the in the age of 2022, people should, they should change that. <laughs> it's just, I feel like it's a little bit weird. Like, you know, you're going, like, there's their secret treasures in there that you have to find in tombs and shit like that. It's not, Yep. it's not, you know... I don't like that word temple. They need to change it, but they won't because that's like, they need to make that sound so magnanimous that it's like, it's so special. Again, marketing genius, by the way, I got to mm -hmm. keep coming back to the idea that this, this shit was genius. The church has a like amazing PR campaign, yep. like on the whole. All the time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I also think of God a lot and I also want to get closer to him mm -hmm. i'm so glad that left eye thing that she just did is usually indicative of retrieving a memory okay so totally coached expand on that so <clears throat> it, i can't remember which side it is but basically when you're trying to remember something you usually tilt your eyes to the left i don't know if it's like a brain mechanism or something but that usually means you're trying to retrieve a memory so it's likely that, that or a lie <laughs> yeah, yeah so her mom sense. just told her these things and she's trying to remember she's like hey, yep i have to edit this and if i have to spend <laughs> more time than i have to because you make a ton of takes <laughs> then i'm gonna be pissed no you're christmas for you christmas next year <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is that though are you as a pr you both have been baptized as eight-year-olds right mm -hmm. are yep. you coached are you coached, not coached, I say coached, but are you educated in why you're getting baptized? And so that's what she's saying back because she's being told that's why you're being baptized. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They're, that makes sense. They explain it to you. They and talk yeah. about it all that makes in sense. Sunday school and stuff. Yeah. And they're like, and if you're a girl, you don't get any shit out of it. <laughs> you basically, yeah. Basically, this is it for you. <laughs> Until you get married. Yep. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Are you going on a mission? If I want to get really baptized, I'm going to say yes. I'm proud of your decision. It's not our decision. You don't really have a choice, but you don't have a choice. I'm proud of your decision. What if this How eight year old creepy, creepy does that sound? Exactly. What if this eight year old decided she didn't want to be? What would Fruby and Frankie Frank do at that point? What would they have done? What would they if you are an eight year old and you don't want to, what do Mormon parents do? There's no way. I don't know Some... ever of a Mormon wow. parent who if that their children came to them and said that that they yeah. wouldn't do it. I don't know of any. So... That's something. And I've, I've heard of a few, very, very few, where they're like, they didn't feel they were ready to be baptized, so they didn't get baptized until they're like 10 or 12. And I'm like, good on you, because if your kid is like aware enough to be like, you know, I don't know if I'm ready for this, then that's great. Then they should never be, I think. I think they're never going to be ready if something's like that. But again, I think, they, I think they do decision. eight, because an eight-year-old is very, very susceptible to do what you want them to do. They're very coercible, very much exactly. so, right? I get my so eight-year-old do probably, anything, and I, I, this is a hundred percent conjecture, but it probably was not a choice. 
Yeah. But they say, I'm glad you made this choice (laughs) because the alternative is not having Christmas next year. (laughs) Look at this creepy picture, by the way. This is like straight out of a horror flick, by the way. I'm glad you made this choice while I pretend to strangle you. Yep. (laughs) Pull your hair. It's a nice French braid, though. It is nice. I'll give her that. braid. No flyaways. I, that's good. a talent right there. Tight. Holy smokes. Jeez. Tight. Who's this guy? Is grandpa? Probably. I have no idea. I heard, if this is grandpa, though, aren't they alienated from that side of the family? I guess grandpa doesn't want to miss it because if they are still connected to the Mormons. It might be, um, um, what's his, uh, C-list Johnny Sin's grandpa, uh, dad or something Oh, like yeah, you're right. The other side, grandpa. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because he's tall. Those earrings match that dress perfectly. Grandma's got really skills does. with a Z. Dang. Grandma's impressive. That's a nice view. Is that what Utah looks like? Yeah. yeah. Especially That's down where they live. Utah They're Valley. so close to the mountains. Can you like, not toboggan for lack of a better term, but can you get on like something? Is that sand? No. No. Oh. It's, it's a little like bit. rocky dirt. I'd still try it once. Would on a bike or something? You, you'd die though, right? There's a I lot of people that do it. I'm yeah. fat, so I'd die. Some right. <laughs> Does he have to wear it out? Why can't he just wear it when he get just put it on when he gets there? Because he looks when like he's I going... got baptized, you wore Fanfare. church clothes to the chapel and then you changed into the jumpers or the jumpsuits at the chapel. Yeah, this is weird. So this is weird. He looks like he's painting a house. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he just did. Maybe this is a different outfit. All right, here we go. Dwight? are not invited to go why not that's not nice that that's rude, rude. <laughs> totally rude are dogs allowed What's in the temple name? dwight dwight <laughs> <laughs> was that what it was <laughs> i think it, it was dwight like. <laughs> oh, okay God. but dogs are not allowed in the temple Let's are dogs him. not in no, the chapel not, no not no in okay at all. okay unless it's like a seeing eye dog or oh okay that's service cool. animal or service something <laughs> That dog cute AF, I'm not gonna lie. I love that dog. I love that dog. Very cute. Let's it rescue. Dog, dog deserves better. Yeah, I think we should <laughs> rescue, aka heist. <laughs> you imagine? <laughs> what's Chad doing over here? Chad's over here. Is he yelling? Is he about to sneeze? Is he gonna barf? He looks. He's, he's, <laughs> what's going on? Oh, what was God. he doing? Okay, whatever. I'm so proud of you for making this decision to get baptized. You know that what you're doing is. Do you hear that language? Who just said that two minutes ago? The exact same language. So yep. she probably wrote this for her kids, right? They have to, family member, like usually when you get baptized, they assign family members to give a talk, like just a short one. Mm-hmm. And so they prep this beforehand. Like she's reading yep. from a sheet because they put it all together beforehand. Yeah. But she would likely use the same kind of language um, because that's the kind of language you made this decision. She wouldn't have had to been coached. It's super yeah, emphasis on my eight year old decided yep. that he wanted to yep. be baptized. The emphasis has got to be on that because most people are like, yeah, they didn't decide that because I have an eight year old exactly. and they decide to, you know, eat Cheerios all for the yep. next 10 years. That's yep. whatever. <laughs> Catch up on their Cheerios. <laughs> yes, seriously. <laughs> the most amazing thing you possibly did. She doesn't believe that. Eve, this is such an exciting time for you. I believe you'll always remember the feelings you had today. I remember when I was baptized. This is from Chad. I remember when I was baptized and the feeling I had that day. Explain the locker room experience with dad. Along with baptisms, water comes more or less talked about part of the experience in this receiving. Okay. This is written by their parents. I, I'm going to need some clarification on this locker room experience. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, just gloss that over. Probably had a moment before he got baptized where he was, didn't probably. want to. And they probably, I don't know. They probably not going to tell that. No, you're probably right. So this is interesting. This is October 9th, 21. And this video just came out recently. September September. Oh, 9th. September. Sorry, September 10th, yeah, American, 21. American, yeah. Wow. Okay. What is this song? I like to look for rainbows. Oh, God. When, is that right? Yeah. I'm this trying is to a think. Triggering. That sounds right. <laughs> well, look at the notes. So it's like, I... I like to look for there, there yeah. is rain. We might get uh, copyright struck. And ponder on the... I'll, I'll fight that copyright strike. I will do it. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't God, miss yeah. hymns. I do not us. miss hymns. I'm getting triggered so badly right now. Thoughtfully sing this look at, at six. chord progression. Like, could it be anything more F, basic? F, A minor, B flat, C7. C7. I can play that. 
C7. Hold on. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> Vaguely. I like to look for rainbows. <laughs> Ever there is C7? C7. Rain. <laughs> Ponder on the beauty <laughs> of something, something. something. It's a good progression. I don't mind it. It's a little Christmassy. It's not terrible. All right. Sorry about that. Everybody who's like hates us now. It's all good. <laughs> Oops. It's a long lasting promise that guides our life through all trials. It's a huge two pages, man. I'd be like, oh man. If I saw someone walk up on stage two pages, I'm like, shit. Seriously. I have to I have to pee. No, usually like when it, with convert baptisms, it'd be the same thing where you'd get people to talk. I'm looking for like five minutes. I'm trying to be like <laughs> start to finish, like thirty minutes with time for them to change. Okay, included. like that's a lot. It's usually not long, but that's long when you're a kid. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Everything good and everything bad. Getting baptized is like the ultimate step in following Him because you get the Holy Ghost. And join the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So you don't get to join the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints unless you're baptized? Yes. Until you're eight, yep. All right, okay. So up to that point, you're just a tag-along? Basically. Yeah. If you were blessed in the church, your names are your name is still on the records. Okay. Uh, but you're not officially a member until you've been baptized. But you cannot go to the temple until you're baptized. What do these kids do when their parents go to the temple? Sitter. They, oh, yeah. they don't go to the temple. There's not like a nope. space they can go and hang out. Oh, I mean, they could, yeah. like, if they had somebody, like an adult, they could sit in the lobby, but... Oh, okay, so they... I don't even know if they really let them sit in the lobby. What about Maybe newborns? What about newborns? Desk. What about newborns? You're kidding you'd me. Have, mm -mm. You'd have to find somebody to watch them. That's when yeah. people go on date nights to the temple and shit. I mean, they don't even sit date next nights. to each other. It's yeah. weird. You just get youths from the ward. Mm -mm. That's dumb. From your congregation. Babies, yep. babies can't even see, so... Okay, whatever. <laughs> I remember getting fat times. And I was so excited. I stepped into the water knowing that what I was doing was pleasing to God. And pleasing to your parents. I made the right choice. And when I came out, I felt like the happiest person in the whole world. And Eve, I know you was doing this too. Do you guys remember your baptism? Was it like that? Do you guys have that like emotional connection? Is it, is it like exactly what she's saying? Yeah. They make it really special. They make a big deal about it. Yeah, like my grandma, they came out from Utah. And she made this huge apple strudel. It was like her special. Ooh, like, yeah. I'm talking like this shit was yes. long. I'm in. And yeah. So it was like a big deal for me. Well, it was sure. it was a little awkward for me because my dad has never been Mormon. My dad's never been in the church. And so you have to have somebody who has the priesthood to baptize you. So my dad couldn't baptize me. Mm -hmm. So I had to pick someone from the ward to baptize oh. me, which in Mormonism is basically unheard of because the dad always does it. And I didn't have that. That's and the, is there shame attached to that? Basically, yeah. Wow, that's dirty. That's dirty. Someone's probably going to be like, "Oh, it's not a shameful thing." Like, yeah. okay, did you get baptized <laughs> by someone that wasn't your dad? Yeah. Yeah. They'll say that meaning yeah. that it is. They're like, "That's the old lady's like, oh, don't yeah. worry about it, honey." Secretly, she's like, "You are a TK smoothing." Yep. All right. Next, <laughs> freaking idiot. Specifically, after um, coming out of the font and going in the locker room with dad. I said, wow, that, that just happened. I was just baptized, and that that felt really... Do these kids sound genuine at all to you? Like, these kids are not... He, Chad like, is Chad. Something's yes. transformed in Chad, and I don't. Again, I don't watch a lot of their stuff, but from Chad's 15-year-old person back in the day to now, this kid feels like he has been... How do I say this? Suppressed, for lack of a better broken. term. Like, he's lost his joy. Broken. Yeah, that's a good term. Like, he's not joyous anymore. He lost it's that. It's just easier to conform. Like, when you have a parent like Ruby, I mean, it's just... I had a parent like her. It's just easier to keep your mouth shut and go along with it. That is so sad, that, because he will never be able to be that joyous kid who wanted to turn into what he wanted to turn into. And maybe he was struggling with certain things, which is why he went to Anastasia. And I, I could have been home Anastasia could have been homosexuality, whatever the case may be. And he's he feels and again, I, I'm just basing this off this thing. But my impression is that he just lost his joy. Weird. Well, and especially if um, he just returned from a mission, if he went the whole two years, there's so many people who are like, I don't like my sibling who just returned from a mission because they're like a robot. Like they don't. Oh, OK. Because no you do that for two or, years. You just repeat mm -hmm. the same shit. You do the same things and it, 
it just indoctrinates it into your head. That's what it is. They become conditioned. That's what it is. Yep. It's conditioning camp. Wow, interesting. Basically. Very interesting. I was really excited to receive the Holy Ghost. And um, I think that's the one thing that um, is not really uh, like talked about by the younger kids is the, is the receiving the Holy Ghost part because the baptism part is so fun. But the Holy Ghost doesn't have a... I don't think these kids have been done anything fun before. <laughs> <'cause>, uh, <laughs> I think they're missing the idea from fun to special. Maybe they should say special because it's... Yeah. yeah. Like, being that's dunked underwater is not fun for anybody. It's also, uh, I was just thinking of this, it's also kind of a weird dynamic because they give these talks publicly, but they're talking to the person who's getting baptized. Yeah, that's right. That's so true. That's weird. kind of weird. weird. Yeah. yeah. It's meant to give us healing. And I think that's so cool that Jesus Christ found a way to be able to um, connect us to him through the Holy Ghost. Mm, his theology's off on that, I think. He just... What did he say? He said that it's the Holy Spirit found a way to connect us to Jesus or the other way around? Jesus has a way to connect us through the Holy Ghost, I think. Something okay. like that. Is what he said. It's weird. I think I, people are not listening, so it doesn't <laughs> yeah, theologically yeah. make any sense. At this point, I'm playing Temple Run. Yeah. On my phone. <laughs> Living life through a whole other direction. And it's going to be led by the Holy Spirit. So I'm very excited for you, and it's a cool day. Oh, he's got his uh, he's got his garments on. I can tell by his pants. Yeah, couldn't be more Ooh, obvious, yeah. right? Wow. This is Did why you get when the people are like, ones? "How do you garment check?" I'm like, "It's so there obvious." It is. So easy. There it is. If you guys are wondering oh, what garment checking is, boom. Especially if you have any sort of fitted pant, like like he does. You sit down. And they ride up, and then you stand up, and you got to smooth them out. And he yes. did not do a good job on that left leg, apparently. Yep. Okay, so it, do some Mormons who are virtue signaling Mormons, will they get extra thick garments? They can say, look at my garments. Who knows? They could. <laughs> I mean, they all that's the whole point of dressing modestly, yeah. right? So it's like very obvious that they're wearing their garments. Okay, okay, okay. I'm excited to see um, what you feel and how you listen to that Holy Spirit throughout your life. Have you guys ever seen a movie Children of the Corn? <laughs> oh. I just have you seen it? Just, or Children Under the in the Attic? Or Flowers oh in the Attic? Oh my god. <laughs> it's so let me tell you the especially the hymns that they do for for kids for like children. the primary hymns. Oh my god. It's like it's just like straight repetition. Like and it, yeah. think about like you know indoctrination and conditioning it, it's mm -hmm. totally what it is and the songs are so gross because it's like making decisions and it, it, it's so triggering to me to hear it now wow. it's funny too because this is <coughs> about the army of Helaman who they were like going out in defense of their mothers like <laughs> killing people warriors. oh great this, yeah. this is about war and death and blood sounds good and just yeah. singing it little kids yeah. are singing it that's, a good that's what makes it. it extra creepy yeah Just change the key. Really just cut out the army of human. She really cut that part out. <laughs> she did, eh? Okay. Yeah. On purpose. People would have looked that up and been like, "What the hell?" <laughs> All right. Go faster. Or I might be mixing up. It might be a different verse. Okay. No, that is in. That's in the chorus. That's in the first verse. Okay. okay. That's in the chorus. And this guy is a, da a grandpa. I might be mixing my stories up though. Okay. Here we go. You live by your family. I testify that heavenly... This guy's a super Mormon. Look at his Bible. That's a super Mormon Bible that's been opened at least 3,000 times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the uh, that's a flex in Christianity, too. If you've got a Bible that's worn, flex. Oh, that's this guy is actually super holy. Mormon. I was going to say, that looks thin. Okay. Yeah, yeah probably. probably. He knows you. He knows you by name. He's known you for a lot longer than you remember. What we do here is going to determine what happens in the next life. Yeah, it does. I want to testify to you that if you keep the commandments, if you do what Heavenly Father wants you to do, you walk the covenant path that Chad talked about, that all of us will be together. There it is. There right it is. Right there. That is a bomb. Okay, I. a lot of people don't realize this, but that is a huge 
huge statement to be made to an eight-year-old kid. Is. If you follow the rules, we'll be together. Meaning if you don't, you will not you be won't. with us. Yep. Who says that to an eight? Again, I understand that they, they, they believe this stuff. I do. I understand. And I honestly do believe that they believe this stuff, to be honest with you. But I just, that stuff makes the, in the, in the world as people grow and evolve as humans, that stuff right there is no belonging even as a person who still believes in jesus as i do okay i i feel like that shit just needs to stop it's the if you do this you will get this thing and there's no such thing as grace that does not again we got to go back to the thief on the cross if you believe what i believe okay thief's like they're going to hell they're on their pathway to hell both of them one of them says hey dude sorry she's like cool you're with me. The other guy's like, you're a dick. And he goes, hell. that's the thing up to the moment. There's no sh sign of grace for these people. Like there's just, there's no, I've never heard once in this, any of these speeches that, you know, there is grace and there's un is unlimited love, unconditional love, any of these things. Not, that doesn't exist in their vocabulary. After all you can do. Yeah, it, it does. It's just not in the, the same correct context. No. Okay. You're it's, not going to hear that in a Sunday no, yeah, sermon. Yeah. Like, that's not... No, you're going to hear... You follow the commandments so you can be together. You're not going to yep. hear... Because it it doesn't really matter compared to the other stuff. They're like, oh, yeah. Like, you by grace, you do get saved. But uh, do you really just want to go to the terrestrial kingdom? <laughs> like, they're not... They're, we, they're trying to sell yeah. you on the top level of yeah. the, the pyramids. Like, we've got a water park and shit on ours. You really want to just go down to the one that doesn't even have an In-N-Out? Like, do you really want to yep. go to just, they only have dollar stores? Do you really want to not have genitals when you die? <laughs> Come on. That's, wow. That's, again, I know we're making fun of it, but that is a very, very powerful statement when he just did that. That's no, heavy. Well, and you hear yeah. the, and this is like traditional with Mormons, but they usually, like, it's usually the men that speak and you can tell, like, there's power behind their words. Like, this man mm -hmm. truly believes what he's saying and that is having a huge impact on the people sitting in front of him. Yeah, and he's taught and he is groomed, for lack of a better term, to be this man he is right now. And he knows yeah. the power he has because he's been told and wow. has been shaped and has been built into him since he's born. Yep. Yep. Wow. When this life is done. Do you guys use the product Mr. Clean to clean uh, magic erasers? Do you have those Mr. Clean magic erasers? <laughs> yes. That's all I'm going to say here. <laughs> Mr. Clean. So shiny. <laughs> oh, you get presents? We didn't get presents. Oh, shit presents, honestly. It's it was like something. Like a I got a bracelet. Book? Or like a, here's a little bank to organize your tithing your regular money. spending money, your saving money, uh, your tithing money. Your tithing money. <laughs> I Man, she gives a color book. One of those. Well, Eve, Jesus how do you color. feel now that you're baptized? Oh, they didn't show. Oh, they're not allowed to show that. I am surprised that they didn't. I mean, if they're going to film in the damn chapel, no, why not go all the way? they wouldn't. Okay, I th okay. I think that would be crossing the line. You hmm. think? I think all so. All right. Okay. Weird. Weird. <laughs> oh. oh, I have one of those. You have one of those? I do. Does my it baptism like it does it looks wow. just like that my and mom has it imagine not changing your design in like over <laughs> almost 20 years it is that exactly that's the they, mormon way um yeah, nobody notices <laughs> it's because they have lots of stock from like the 30s <laughs> so the thing guys understand what this means okay so they make such a big deal out of this that so you get the book and everything else they're putting you guys don't don't let this get lost on you the weight of what is happening and how special they make it and how important and powerful this really is by giving you a book of it, the memory, every filming it, families, strudels, everything, presents. Yep. It's it is a huge deal. Very, very weighty. It is. She probably got a, a picture of the temple mm -hmm. too to put in her room so that she can see it every day. Yep. Does she get I a temple recommend at this point? No, you don't get a temple recommend. You can't Not even get a limited use until you're like whatever year she's turning 12. That's when, That's she, can when get she can get it. But she can um, go to the temple now, though, without the temple recommend. Oh, no, she can't no. even. So you still can't get in the damn temple. No. no. <laughs> yeah. But when, they'll still take turn, them to it. Yeah. When you turn 12, you can just go to do baptisms, but okay. that's it. You don't even get to see the rest. Like of we went on a church trip when I was, when I was around, I was around eight where we would just go and touch the temple. Like that's what you would the, do. The church leaders it. would Physical take building. you there to touch it. And that's then they creepy. would take a picture the of outside. you touching it. <laughs> so the temple is only made for, it's not Sunday morning services. You're going to, the temple is made for baptizing the dead and it is a holy place to just gather. Is there meetings? Do they have potlucks? What? It's the, the whole, <laughs> the endowment that we explained that one time. Right. Yes. Yes. The, but that's it really. 
so it's this giant building made just for ceremonies like that and weddings yeah and silly ceilings yep that's it what a waste of money you don't even get totally it's not even a starbucks or any shit f that like what a waste of money cafeterias anymore they got unbelievable cafeterias but not Mm -hmm. anymore millions of dollars on these buildings wow they're nice buildings though i'll give them that they are they're gorgeous and in the in the apocalypse man i'm i'm gonna take one of those I'm the swell You'd stay. be good in the Salt Lake Temple. They're reinforcing it for earthquakes right if now. If there's ever a zombie apocalypse or an apocalypse of any kind, you make your way down to Utah, okay? And then Absolutely. lots of Mormons have lots of shit. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Food storage. All I'm saying. We got it all. Oh, yeah. Heading down there. Oh, Eve, that's so neat. You can write all of your thoughts and feelings about your special... D- <laughs> the first page. Mom took Christmas away, that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, especially now that we know that this was before Christmas. Yep, it I was. Yeah. Only imagine. So hear this for a second. That actually changes things even for the worst. Okay, so this girl, Eve, lost Christmas for doing something. After she got baptized, after this very special moment, everything else. So from September to December, she lost Christmas. What did she do in, that, in, that, in those three months? Yes. I'm just saying maybe she didn't clean a room, didn't make her lunch. I think there I don't think anything that this girl did warranted it, but Ruby thought it did and then it kept escalating so it wasn't changing. It was likely yeah. something mild and mild on top of mild it was never. I don't think that this girl did anything wrong to do that. Yeah, I don't either. So this changes it because if she just got baptized and then she lost Christmas, great message. Yeah, that's not wow. helpful. Wow. You did something good, but uh, not good enough to maintain yep. your Christmas. Yeah. I mean, at that point, you should have said, you know what? You got baptized. You made a couple mistakes. I'm so glad you did that. This is what grace looks like. I'm going to teach you with grace by saying, everything you've done is forgiven up to this point. Let's have an amazing Christmas. We'll reset and then we'll start over. That's what grace is. That's what grace is. Well, in Mormonism, the whole aspect is if you if you sin or you make a mistake, you repent. And so there's mm-hmm. nothing that she could have done that she couldn't have repented for. Exactly. Okay, maybe she didn't want to repent yeah. then. Maybe, I don't... She's letting Mormonism show the true colors through an analogy that she's actively participating in. Like, yeah. really, you can repent, but there's also the social mm-hmm. consequences of your sins that yep. you were basically shamed for when you had to very publicly not take the sacrament because the bishop told you you couldn't. Yeah. That's heavy. Shit, man. So much shame embedded in Mormon culture. It's, it's almost yeah. built completely on shame. 100%. Wow. It thrives in wow. Mormonism. It's, this video turned to be way heavier than I expected it, to be honest. I'm right. not going to lie. Oh. Good thing we got some jokes in. Your picture right there. Wow, that's neat. Oh, that's where you put your picture? Thanks. <laughs> Thanks there, weirdo. You don't, you don't put the picture of the, this random girl. <laughs> this where Joseph, the picture, picture of Joseph Smith goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all look the same. Oh, look, what we got here? We got a spread. We got Doritos. I'm in. Chicken salad. That looks like it's from uh, Costco. Uh, Croissants. Costco chicken salad on Costco croissant. Oh, Mm -hmm. that's good. I'm in. Uh, I don't know what those oranges over there. I don't know what that's over there. They look like something. Apples? Yeah, that's weird. They got the Costco cookies. Grandpa's over there with his matlock hair eating something. He's down in it. He's got the grapes going on. Paper plates. Uh-huh. They brought Look all the fly. yeah. They got Still. all the matching earrings. They got all the good stuff. Paper plates. I wonder if they can put the ca- the milk on their cake afterwards. Do you get cake <laughs> if you're baptized? That was the like the first strudel. thing. Do we you saw guys with put this cake family. on? Do you guys put milk on your cake? No, that okay. is the weirdest Never, thing I've ever heard. Ever. I'm gonna try. It's it. like some sort of demented fresh <laughs> <Les> leches cake. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why you film yourself eating? It's weird. That's so awkward. It's weird. He's so pissed. Also, take note here. This was in September. Where is the rest of the family? If this is such a big deal, where is everybody else? They have a huge family. They have it a is huge a family. Bizarre because right? you. I mean, his family came from a different state. So, like, baptisms is a really big deal. Like, people come from yeah. all over. Like, my dad was at mine, and he's not even Mormon. Yeah, they don't need, like, oh my geographically gosh. from what I've seen. The rest of the family doesn't. They're all close. That far. They are close. They're, and hear me out. This is giving me more credence to thinking that the other families are on the outs of Mormonism, meaning they didn't go to temple because maybe they couldn't. It could have been. That's are you awkward. wait? Are you allowed to go to this if you're not a Mormon though? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's not the issue. So like something I, is up. Why would they? W- there's got to be so much beef that they're gonna not put it aside for a child. That's a big deal. Like this that's is, a big deal. This yeah. is weird behavior for Mormons. Yeah. Can't put it, that aside for a child. There's something else going on. There's something way deeper. Super 
super weird. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be a big deal to not have people attend. Yeah, and, I, and I, I invited my first grade. I wasn't in first grade at the time, but I invited my first grade teacher to my baptism, and she came. Okay. Same. Very nice. She was probably like, okay. what the? <laughs> what is going on? Um, <laughs> so, again, okay. this just, again, this, this to me says that Ruby and what's his name, Kevin, have done something or the other family has done something and are refusing to forgive or forget or something. This is big deal. In Mormon in Mormon culture, I bet you if we go back to their videos and they have other baptism videos, all the family's been at every single one except for this tiny one Probably. who does Probably. who gets nobody there, who gets no support. What is that going to do for her too? She know. What about their cousins? Are they literally nothing to each other now? It's weird, weird. because they all have kids the same age, don't they? They do. Wow. It's, so again, they're not going to tell us this beef. They'll tell us everything else with their kids, medical conditions, acne, this. periods, shaving legs, but they won't tell us this. What does that tell you? Yeah. Priorities, I'm glad, right? right? Honestly, glad that they don't, to be honest. But at the same time, I'm like, why? Why? Why this? Why, Something went on. Stop there. Might be Something lawsuits. Happened. Okay. Okay. They're a dumb logo. Okay. <laughs> Stupid All right, that was logo. so okay. Thoughts, final thoughts. I mean, we come, covered a bunch of stuff. It got heavy. We did uncover the end part. Was there was probably the biggest thing here, the family not being there. That was a big deal. Yeah, that is a big deal. Yeah, but, which real. I mean, it could be on on. I mean, it could e go both ways. Like if they're if her family members have stepped out of the church and are like doing their own thing, it could be that she doesn't want them there. That could be the other piece of this. Is that's what again? That's what I'm thinking. Is that they say, well, if you're not going to follow these Mormon whatever principles or whatever you think we don't want you to be a part of that because yeah, maybe attracting maybe they're trying to get ruby and and kevin to like see their what they're maybe they these guys are deconstructing their mormon faith i'm again this is all conjecture this could be completely wrong they might just be fighting over someone dropped someone's favorite dish at a, at a potluck sure. okay yeah. but hear me out this it, i don't think this type of beef happens and mormon beef is different mormon beef comes down to the religion itself and people not adhering or leaving or whatever, right? That's the biggest beef yeah. in Mormon culture. Well, yeah, because it, I mean, it's essentially saying you don't want to be with them in the afterlife. So, yep. which is what he said there. That's great. And it sounded like he was really emphasizing it. Like, he's almost like he said that he knew it was going to be on video and maybe they did that to show the other family this. Like, we're sleuthing right now and I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the sleuthing yeah. heat right now. Well, so, which, he, would, he would also say it just out of. Yeah, Mormons are so conditioned yeah. to say shit like yeah. that. But is do we know for sure whose side but of the family nice those parents thing. are? Like those it, parents are definitely not like the they're not parents. the ones that have vlogs. Those are the ones that don't okay. have the vlog. Which is interesting. Yeah, okay. Actually, weird. hold on, hold on. There's an easy way to check it. Hold Let on. us fact check. What, what are they called? The family. Uh, it's like Griffith's family. Griffith's family. Oh, is this Griffith's something? Griffith's family. I hate Here we go. For knowing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not them. Hundred percent it's not them. Okay. Cool. See, that's weird. Yeah. Well, that's the, weird. The, nope. Yeah. Something is like, up. Uh, him. Tall. Nope. It's like gotta your be. Own parents wouldn't it's Kevin's come? side. That's gotta be Kevin's side because Frankie's side is the Griffiths. Sorry. Drew. Um. What's her name? What the hell's her name? Ruby. 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 Sherry? Oh my God. Ruby's side is the Griffiths, right? And so, yeah, they're beefing. There's some beef because that's his side of the family. Okay. But where? Yeah. But where are his brothers and sisters? Does Kevin have any brothers and sisters? That's another weird thing. Know. Usually, I mean, baptisms are usually like Maybe a really they didn't big turnout. Put it on camera or something. I don't know. It seems Hard weird for say. your own parents not to come to your child's baptism. Like that's that's weird. Yeah, it's uh, this is a very interesting story that we're gonna keep diving into. I'm sure the tea will drop eventually. Someone will say something. Someone will know something on the inside and spill it. But again, it's it's very. You don't miss that. Is what we're saying. That's like a big event, and you don't miss it. So that's that's proof of massive beef. And it totally. seems like Ruby and Kevin and their family on the outside, not the opposite way. I mean, that's a lot of family members to not show up to your mm -hmm. event. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if some of the one of them or two of them came, that would be one thing. But when all of them aren't showing up, that's... Seriously. There's beef, hundred percent. There's they're fighting. All right. Well, I mean that was great. I mean let's continue to cover that. I like this doing this type of thing. Other topics that we're gonna do are you know we've got a whole list of them, so we're gonna keep doing it. I love that you guys come here. And I love doing these videos with you guys, and I really appreciate your time because you're you're my favorites. It's easy because <laughs> I don't have to edit it. So so we love this. It's true, right? And yes, yeah, <laughs> I have to go do all the things. I'm not teaching Tyson, the twenty year old, how to edit right now because he doesn't want oh. to get a job because he's a loser. No, he's not a loser. But he got a job at he got a job at Amazon on overnight shifts. I'm like, you're gonna hate this. He's like, no, it's gonna be awesome. 
as soon as Christmas rush is over, you get, you get offered if you want to stay or not because he just does a Christmas rush. He's like, yeah, I ain't doing this shit. <laughs> He's like, done. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> So funny. I'm going to teach him how to edit. Guys, any final thoughts or what do you want to say? Hello, what do you want to cover next maybe? I don't even know. We can talk about what? polygamy. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's going to be a spicy topic. Let's do that because that. That's a good one. That is a no go in my religion. Like that's one where we make that's when we're like, <laughs> excuse me. That's the one we, we don't touch. So that is a very big uh, standout for Mormon culture for sure. But you'll hear oh, Mormons yeah. like, we don't, that's nobody does that. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. I mean, look at Jordan Page's house that was made for polygamy. They have five She's kitchens. The worst. Jordan the worst. Page. Ugh. I don't anyway, know if we'll legally, could they do that? What? What? All living under the same roof. Not in Utah. No, they couldn't. Do you that can't do legal polygamy in Utah. No, no. I'm surprised. Okay, but they a lot of them practice spiritual yeah. polygamy, so they're so only married legal. to like yeah. the first one. But it's just not illegal, right? You can yeah. do that. It's not legal, which is why but I think the, a lot of them, the sister wives people, they had to move to Vegas Nevada for. You can't be married to multiple women. Is the in thing. Nevada you can though. Legally, you can't, but in, yeah, I think wherever they live, Las Vegas or wherever you can. Yeah. In your opinion. Statehood hinged on that. Okay. Sorry, we'll come back to that because I have a lot of questions already. So we'll do it. We'll do that again in our next one. So everybody, make sure you head over to follow Jordan McKay on TikTok, on Instagram, and on YouTube. YouTube is probably the biggest one, right? Head over there. Instagram is a big following. They're always doing really, really interesting videos you do not want to miss. You guys do lives as well? Uh, we haven't yet. We haven't yet. Really. We should probably start doing that. Uh, we should yeah, do a live. Kind of Why don't we do a live together on your channel? We should. We'll do about this we'll, and people will come and ask all the questions. I think we've tried to do yeah. that before. Do Let's that. do that. That's easy okay. to do. We use my platform because I pay for the shit, but we'll put it on your channel just because okay. I think that's a great idea. Let's do that. And you guys can come ask all your questions and all the trolls are welcome. I love that. Bring in, bring in the people who think they know shit because they don't. Yes. Let's get educated. Let's educate we're here some for people. it. There's a couple residents. We love them. <laughs> but we like them yes. because we're trying to educate them and free them. We are going to yes. uh, dunk suit them in the toilet <laughs> bowl of justice. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for being on the show. I really love you guys. And uh, we'll see you next time.